Hello friends, this video on ecosystem part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So litter and detritus. So litter refers to the various waste products that come out of different uses. Like you would have seen that uh, papers or uh, any sort of things like plastics, papers, anything that come out of your home itself. So they all form together litter whereas detritus refers to the remains of dead plants and animals so that is detritus so anything other than detritus can be categorized as litter so litter consists of biodegradable as well as non-biodegradable matter what is biodegradable which can be broken down by microorganisms non-biodegradable like plastics which cannot be broken down into simpler forms by microorganisms but detritus consists only of biodegradable matter because the process of decomposition can completely break them down and I mean, put them into the soil in the form of minerals or inorganic materials or humus. It is found above the ground and detritus is found above as well as below the ground because when the process of decomposition takes place it happens below the ground. So that is how litter and detritus differ from each other. Question number seven, describe the components of an ecosystem. An ecosystem primarily have two components, biotic components and non abiotic components. So biotic components are the living organisms, of the ecosystem for example if you take the example of forest ecosystem all these animals birds insects they form the biotic components whereas abiotic components are the non-living components now in the same ecosystem for example the same forest ecosystem you also have some non-living components like soil water and air so these are the two components of any ecosystem question number eight what is primary productivity? Give brief description of factors that affect primary productivity. So primary productivity, so the entire production is primarily dependent on the producers. So whatever is being produced by them is termed as primary productivity. So it is the amount of biomass produced per unit area per unit time by plants during photosynthesis. So the total amount of biomass that gets produced is primary productivity. Now as we have discussed before there are two types of primary productivity when is net primary productivity and the other one is gross primary productivity so gross primary productivity is the total amount of biomass that is getting produced and net primary productivity is total the gross primary productivity minus the respiration losses that means minus the expenses of the plant itself so the factors on which primary productivity depends are the plant species. Different plant species might have different productivity. Nutrient availability, better nutrients available, so better is the productivity. Environmental factors like climate, water availability, etc. So all those things also determine the primary productivity. Question number nine. Write important features of a sedimentary cycle in an ecosystem. Now, which sedimentary cycle did we discuss here? We discussed the phosphorus cycle. So, what were some of the important features of phosphorus cycle? So, for phosphorus cycle, the earth's crust is their natural reservoir and that is why they, it is a sedimentary cycle because it is present in the form of sediments in the earth's crust. And what was the reservoir? Now, if I specifically talk about the phosphorus cycle, so this for, for this phosphorus cycle, it was present in the form of phosphates in the rocks. So that is how it was present in its natural reservoir. Examples of sedimentary cycle are sodium, phosphorus, calcium, potassium. So these are all examples of uh, phosphor uh, sedimentary cycles. These are slow cycles, that is they take long time to complete their circulation. Now we already saw how circulation takes place. So from the sediments, it, now when the rocks weather, when the rocks break down or dissolves, the soil formation takes place and in that soil, phosphate remain as dissolved. From the soil, it is taken up by the plants, from plants it goes to animals, from when the plants and animals die, they come back again to the decomposers and that's how it come back to the soil. Now this entire process takes a long time and that is why these are slow cycles. 
less perfect when compared to gaseous cycles. Now, why do we call them less perfect? That's because sometimes the nutrient elements may get locked in their reservoirs. That is, what do we mean by locked? For example, the reservoir is rock in case of phosphate, phosphorus. Now, sometimes it might happen that some rocks do not weather at all. The rocks do not dissolve. Now, if the rocks do not break down or if they do not dissolve, the phosphorus will not come out of it. So that means the phosphorus gets blocked in their reservoirs. And this is very common in sedimentary cycles. So therefore, what happens in this case? It takes very, very long time to come out. Now, until and unless it doesn't comes out, the cycle will not be able to pr proceed further. So that, that way, it is less perfect when compared to the gaseous cycle. Because in case of gaseous cycle, it happens quite faster and it is more perfect because there is no delay anywhere. There are no less probability of uh, the substance getting locked over anywhere so those chances are lesser so that means it is less perfect when compared to the gaseous cycle so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and i hope that this lesson on by and i hope that this lesson on ecosystem would have helped you and so see you all in the next lesson thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.